So the trip getting here wasn't uh, your normal um, show up at a little ski resort and go skiing kind of thing. And uh, we dragged our bags out to the docks and jumped on the float plane. And so uh, the boat was about an hour, 10 minute flight. It's pretty cool, you know, you just, you don't just show up at a place like this. It takes a lot of effort and a lot of people like putting together a good game plan and, and uh, a lot of different steps on the way to get here. So that makes it more special. It's like a, it's a full on adventure. I am so pumped to get him here, get him into the mix, and see what this guy that can go 90 miles an hour down the Hanencom, you know, Olympian, and, and he's just got an amazing pedigree. I'm really interested to see what's going to happen when we put him up in these big mountains, you know, these steep powder faces and these cliffs. And uh, I'm expecting big things, but I think at the same time he'll have a few jitters because it's a totally different uh, environment out there. So it's going to be really interesting to see what he can do. So Ralph's rolled in, but unfortunately he rolled in when we, had, when we had bad weather. You know, we can't go up on the hill because of the weather, but uh, the one good thing is it's reloading for us up there. New snow to ski and, you know, you just got to play the game, hang out and wait. When you have a lot of time in your hands, you, you find a lot of things to do. And out here it's pretty cool to explore and check out this kind of wilderness. Uh, we've been uh, sitting on the cloud for three or four days and we've just woken up to Bluebird. So we got up early this morning and now we're hopping in the heli with our skis and our hopes are high. And as soon as we flew out we found this amazing ridge with a lot of cool lines on it. Um, some big lines too. It was probably more than we had wanted for our first run of the day, but since we were there, it was something you couldn't really pass up. So Dav and I shammed for this line, and I ended up conquering the sham after seven or eight attempts. Oh! oh. oh. That, was, that was like Abba. seven or eight. abba has got it. All right. Yeah. It's all yours. I scoped the line with the best of my ability, but as soon as I got into that thing, everything just looked so much different. It's just a lot of snow started moving. Like instantly I had to really watch out for my slough. I actually let my slough get ahead of me just because I didn't want to get taken up by, the, uh, by that slough. Big mountain skiing is just really hard that way, you know, trying to like look at the mountain and find all your landmarks, but as you're skiing down, all those landmarks just look totally different. Chris is, uh, he's one of the best skiers around. He's super solid on his skis. He really commits once he makes a decision. On a line, he just knows so much. He knows so much about what's going to happen up there. It's, it's good to have a guy with that much experience on this trip. And I'm just trying to soak it up as much as I can. My first run with MSP was a was a good experience. Whole different world for me. Being on top of something where I don't know what I'm getting into, it's just rolling over. But uh, yeah, I love this kind of snow, and, and I had a I had a blast. Snow is as good as it gets, and and uh, just have a little taste. I just don't fear. We don't fear. Oh boy, get out of here with your bully boy tactics. It was cool just to see him stomp his first line. He was super pumped. Darren is the most successful speed skier downhill in Super G in 20 years in the U.S. He's the man. It's 
Yeah, my, my finished eye, I saw that just torn off. Nice, dude. Awesome. That little one gave me a little thump at the top. Yeah, staying on top, you're just like, all right, here it's we go. Nice. So you just lay that <laughs> hip in, just kind of slowing yep. yourself down. And Butter. And that snow is incredible. incredible. So nice. Perfect, huh?